Hello students, welcome to DC LMS e-learning platform. In today's session, let us learn about micrometry. Micrometry. In this particular slide, you can observe that giardia and cryptosporidium is being measured for its length and breadth. But the scale used here is not the normal scale but a microscopic scale known as micrometer. So using a micrometer we can measure the length and breadth so the size of a cell can be measured. So this is known as micrometry. Introduction. Microscopic objects can be measured with the help of a compound microscope. The measurements are expressed in micrometers and are made using a micrometer. It involves an ocular micrometer and a stage micrometer. So ocular micrometer is the micrometer which is placed in the eyepiece of a microscope whereas stage micrometer is the one which is placed on the stage of a microscope that is where a slide is being placed normally that is the stage. So the micrometer here is called as stage micrometer. So an ocular micrometer is a transparent circular glass disc uh, etched with 100 equal divisions which is placed in the body of the eyepiece therefore it is also known as eyepiece eye micrometer. Whereas the stage micrometer is a glass line on which scale of known intervals is marked. The scale again has 100 gradations which is equal to 1 mm. So the entire stage micrometer is 1 mm which further has 100 divisions. So each division will be 0.01 mm or 10 microns. Now the first step in micrometry is the calibration of ocular micrometer with that of a stage micrometer. Now the calibration is done for each objective of the microscope separately. Say for example if I am using 10x so calibration has to be done for 10x separately. If I am using it at 45x then it has to be again recalibrated at 45x. So it has to be done for each objective of the microscope separately. Now when the scale of the stage micrometer is focused the ocular micrometer is also seen in the superimposed condition. So at a time we are placing both the micrometers one in the eyepiece the other one on the stage together. So we can see two different markings in the vision in the field of vision now what has to be done is we have to superimpose them in such a way that the first line of the stage micrometer and the first uh, etching on the ocular micrometer coincides with each other once it is coinciding now it will be calibrated so the number of divisions of the stage micrometer that corresponds to a full scale on the ocular micrometer is first recorded that is ap apart from the first sinking where does it next coincide exactly so that gradation on both ocular as well as stage micrometer is recorded separately once it is done then we say that it is calibrated and we have a calibration factor formula wherein we obtain the calibration factor since the measurement of each division of stage micrometer is known. The ocular micrometer divisions are appropriately converted to micrometers. Once the ocular micrometer is calibrated, the dimensions of objects can be measured. I, uh, now it was too theoretical. Let us try to understand with the principle with the help of an image. Now moving on to the principle. All measurements of length are based on a comparison of the object with another of known dimension or with a standardized calibrated scale. This basic principle is applicable to the measurement of specimens observed in the microscope. Now the measurements of microscopic objects can be done by different methods. Measurement using a stage micrometer and an ocular micrometer is an accurate method. The actual measurement is done with the eyepiece micrometer but the scale on the eyepiece micrometer has to be calibrated using the stage micrometer for combination of eyepieces and objective. Microscopic measurements are usually expressed in terms of units called as microns or micrometer. 
Now it has three components that is first one is the ocular micrometer, second one is the stage micrometer and third one is the combined ocular stage micrometer which is calibrated. First is ocular micrometer. As you see, it is a round disc with etchings on its disc which has to be placed inside the eyepiece. So the eyepiece has to be taken out, the assembly has to be removed, this ocular micrometer has to be placed inside, locked and then placed back into the microscope or the eyepiece of the microscope. So ocular micrometer is basically a glass disc which is nearly 21 mm in diameter. On it is engraved a linear scale with 100 equal divisions and every 10th division is being marked and indicated by a long line that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, again 10. So, every 10th division is being marked and indicated by a long line. So, this scale is 1 cm long or even less than that. In any case, the size of the division is arbitrary and the engraved portion is protected by another glass disc. While in use, the eyepiece micrometer rests on the field of the eyepiece. So, this continues. So, if this is 0, this will be 10. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Again, the 10th line. So, this will be around 20. So, this goes on. So, up to 0 to 100, we have this scale. Now, moving on to stage micrometer. So, it consists of a glass slide with uh, of usual dimensions with a linear mm scale engraved on it so the scale has 100 equal divisions so that scale is only about 1 mm and in turn that 1 mm has 100 divisions so each division will be around 0.01 mm or 10 microns again every fifth and 10 divisions are marked by extended lines the engraved portion is covered with the cover slip and when in use the micrometer is held in position on the stage of the microscope in a usual way like however we handle the slide on the stage of the microscope same way the stage micrometer is kept and focused and here in the image you can see the stage micrometer with 1 mm etching and in in turn this 1 mm has 100 uh, gradations so usually stage micrometer will be kept protected in a plastic box and that's how it looks like. Now moving on to the next step that is the calibration. So the top lens of the eyepiece is removed and the eyepiece micrometer is placed again locked and uh, uh, locked onto the field stock of the eyepiece. Now the top lens is now replaced and the eyepiece into the body tube of the microscope. That is the eyepiece is removable from the microscope so the eyepiece is removed the assembly is now dismantled the ocular micrometer is placed inside this uh, ocular lens placed assembled back and then placed back into the microscope now the second stage that is the stage micrometer is now placed on the microscope just like how we place a slide and now it has to be focused so that we can see the markings of the stage micrometer once it is seen what we do is both ocular and stage micrometer has to be calibrated by superimposing one upon the other this superimposition has to be done in such a way that the first marking of the stage micrometer has to coincide with the first marking of the ocular micrometer once it is done it is said to be calibrated now we have to ensure that from the first coincided lines of both stage and ocular micrometer we have to see which next lines of both are coinciding exactly so suppose i found the next coinciding line now i have to count the number of divisions on both ocular and stage micrometer between the zeroth and the first coincided line and i have to make a note of both of those values so now the counting of the markings on both the scales from 0th point till a division mark on one scale coincides with that of another scale has to be noted down. Once this is done, we can calculate the calibration factor. Now this has been represented pictorially using this image. So in the first image, you can see the 
ocular micrometer where the gradations or graduations must be calibrated for each objective on the microscope that is for 10x it has to be done separately for 45x it has to be done separately next the stage micrometer we know if they are placed about 10 micron apart now both are focused in such a way that the first line of both the ocular as well as the stage micrometer coincides once it coincides we look out for the next place where they both are coinciding again in between this we have to see how many divisions of ocular and how many divisions of stage micrometers are in between these coincided places that value has to be recorded now say for example okay suppose from the zeroth point of a superimposed uh, ocular and stage micrometer the next coinciding point the next coinciding point of the two is somewhere here so now in between there are so many gradations of both ocular and stage micrometer suppose the in between this zeroth and first coinciding line of ocular meter there are about assume there are about five divisions one two three four five and between that of uh, stage micrometer zeroth and first of stage micrometer assume there is about 15 such lines one two three four 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now this value is 5 and this value is 10. So in ocular it is 5 and in case of stage micrometer it is uh, 15. Sorry, it is not 10, it is 15. Now these values are required for obtaining the calibration factor. So it's 5 and 15 for ocular and stage micrometer. Say for example. Okay, so let us have these values recorded. Now, in this calibration factor, so the number of divisions on the stage micrometer was 15. The number of divisions on the eyepiece micrometer was 5 into 10. So, the calibration factor is 30. Okay. Now, since the length of each division on the stage micrometer is known, the length of one of the division on eyepiece micrometer can be easily calculated. So, this value is known as calibration factor. So, for the example I have taken, the CF is about 30. Now, a certain calibration factor is applicable for a particular combination of eyepiece and objective and hence each combination of eyepiece and objective has to be separately calibrated. Say, say this was done at 10x. Suppose now I want to redo it at 45x. Then I cannot use this calibration factor value. I have to redo the calibration. I have to redo everything. And the new calibration factor value has to be used at this particular magnification or this particular resolution objective. Now, I will take the example of measurement of breadth of hair. See, the length of hair varies. A person can have a longer hair length, a person can have shorter hair length. But when it comes to breadth, we can have an average value of the breadth. So, in case I want to measure the breadth of hair, what do I do? Now, I have calibrated both the ocular and stage micrometers. Now, what I do is, I remove the stage micrometer, rather place this line which contains hair follicle so that its breadth can be measured. Once I place this, only I have one gradation scale which is that of the eyepiece. So using that eyepiece, I calculate the length and I move the eyepiece such that I can even measure the breadth. It, since it's a hair follicle, I'm not bothered about the length, I'm only bothered about the breadth. So I take the number of divisions. So the number of divisions, say for example, it was about um, 5 divisions on the ocular meter. Now I have to multiply it with the calibration factor. Suppose there were only two divisions, the hair follicle was very thin and its breadth was only up to two divisions of ocular micrometer. Now I have taken two divisions, I have to multiply it with the calibration factor. In the previous example, I have just derived one calibration factor value of 30. Now 13 to 2, it is roughly 60. So I can say that the breadth of this hair is 60 micron. So this is just one example, but in general, human hair follicle has an average of about 65 microns. Now moving on to the application part, 
uh, this is mostly employed in a microbiological laboratory but it can also be employed in life science laboratory because it can be used to uh, measure size of both animal cells as well as plant cells say for example size of onion cells it can be measured using the same micrometer in case i want to measure the size of an rbc cell then i can use micrometer again so it is not just um, limited to microbiology it can be used in other uh, and science life sciences also but it is mostly applied in microbiological laboratory so the main purpose of this method is to identify the length of organisms like bacteria virus human rbc cells e cells etc also we can use to measure the breadth of hair follicle as explained earlier so basically it helps in determining sizes of different microbes like bacteria protozoa yeast in case of yeast we are not bothered about the length and breadth rather we take into consideration the diameter of the cell so in that case we can use it to determine the size to quickly summarize micrometry refers to the measurement of dimensions of desired microorganisms under a microscope which uses two micro scales known as micrometers the actual measurement is done with the eyepiece micrometer but the scale on the eyepiece micrometer has to be calibrated using the stage micrometer for each combination of eyepiece and objective it is used to measure the size of various microbes and cells there lies the application thank you for watching